Here I wanna show you guys a new, well, at least new to me integral trick. And this is not like a method of integration which is universal. It won't work all the time, but maybe it's useful to know for now and then. So let's look at the integral that we wanna tackle. So it's gonna be the integral of x cubed over the square root of x squared plus one dx. There are maybe two standard ways to do this. You could do trigonometric substitution. Notice that the substitution x equals tangent theta will work nicely here because that'll make this denominator equal to secant theta. You can actually do a rationalizing substitution here as well. Well, let's notice that if you let u be the inside of this square root, well then the numerator has something to do with u times du. I'll let you guys think about both of these methods on your own if you want to. Like I said, we're gonna do a bit of a trick. And like I said, also, this is not universal. This will not always work, but maybe it's useful to see. I was interested enough in it to make this video at least. Okay, so let's look at the integrand here and think about the degree of the integrand, where we're thinking about it as maybe not being a polynomial because it's not a polynomial, but it's close to being a polynomial. So the degree of x cubed over the square root of x plus one is equal, and maybe I'll put this equal in quotes because this is really a loose idea of the degree. It's gonna be equal to three minus two over two. Well, so let's talk about why it's three minus two over two. Well, the degree of the numerator is clearly equal to three. And then the degree of the denominator, well, the interior of the square root is two, but we're taking a square root. So this would be the fact that we've got an x squared, and then the fact that we've got a square root puts that two in the denominator. So in the end, we have three minus one, which is two. Well, since the degree is essentially equal to two, under this like loosened idea of the degree. And when you take the antiderivative of a polynomial, it increases the degree by one. We would expect, so I'll write it like this, we'll expect the antiderivative of our object to have degree equal to two plus one or three. And so that gives us a nice guess of what our antiderivative looks like. So let's maybe write that down. Let's see what our guess is. So I'm gonna guess that the antiderivative of x cubed over the square root of x squared plus one dx is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c times the square root of x squared plus one. Well, let's just check that this degree makes sense. Notice here we've got a quadratic polynomial that clearly has degree two. And then here we've got something that's quadratic inside of a square root. That gives us an effective degree of one. So all together, this object right here has degree three. Now you might say, well, why are we putting the square root of x squared plus one in here? Well, that's because our integrand is made up of that type of function. So we expect the antiderivative to include that type of function as well. In fact, the integrand is a polynomial and that type of function. And so that means we expect the antiderivative to be a polynomial on that type of function. Unless, of course, some sort of inverse trig function were to pop out of this, but then this trick really wouldn't apply, unfortunately. Okay, so that kind of motivates our guess. Then from here, we're just going to take the derivative of both sides. So notice taking the derivative of the left-hand side and using the fundamental theorem of calculus will give us x cubed over square root of x squared plus 1. Now we'll take the derivative of the right-hand side using the product rule. So that'll give us 2 times ax plus b. That's the derivative of this first term times the square root of x squared plus 1. And then plus ax squared plus bx plus c times the derivative of this second term. We've got to use the chain rule on that, but what we'll end up with is x over the square root of x squared plus 1. 
Now next, we might wanna clear the denominator, which will also put this all in terms of a polynomial equation. We can do that by multiplying both sides or multiplying this entire equation by x squared plus one. That'll give us x cubed over here on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, it'll give us two ax plus b times x squared plus one, because those two square roots build up and annihilate each other. And then here we'll have plus ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx by distributing that x through. Now what we can do is maybe multiply this out. That'll give us 2ax cubed and then plus bx squared plus 2ax plus b. That's what we get from multiplying that out. And now let's combine like terms. So notice the coefficient of x cubed over here on the right hand side is 3a. So we have 3a times x cubed. Now let's look at the coefficient of x squared. So the coefficient of x squared will be bx squared plus another bx squared. So that'll be 2bx squared. What's the coefficient of x? The coefficient of x is 2ax here plus cx there. So that's gonna be plus 2a plus c times x. Then finally, the constant term is just b. Great. But now we can compare the left-hand side with the right-hand side. So notice this x cubed must be equal to this thing right here. But that means that our 3a must be equal to 1. So putting that together, that means our a must be equal to 1 third. And then the b has to be equal to 0. That's because there's no x squared over on this side of the equation and no constant term on this side of the equation. And then our c must be negative 2 times a. So in other words, our c is equal to negative 2 thirds. Okay, so that means we can finish this whole thing off and I'll fit it in right down here. So we determined that a was equal to a third and c was equal to negative two thirds. So that means we have, this is one third x squared minus two times the square root of x squared plus one. I went ahead and factored the one third out. And so that's what we have for this antiderivative. We might as well add the plus c because we have an antiderivative. And then of course, maybe check that by taking the derivative, but I'll let you guys do that if you need to. And that's a good place to stop.